this is uh, lecture 42 okay and uh, we're talking about coding and uh, and we're using this very simple BPSK over AWGN model for uh, for coding okay so how's the whole thing going to work instead of instead of uh, mapping every bit to a symbol and sending it across I'm going to take k bits and then map them to uh, code I do an encoding okay according to some code I get a code word C which is n bits and then you do a 0 to 1 1 to minus 1 BPSK okay so you do a mapping and then this goes through a channel which is modified which is modeled as just addition of noise okay and then you receive a received vector r okay so this one i'll call maybe a symbol vector s which is n n symbols this is r r is the received vector which has n real values okay so no, noise added to plus one or minus one okay so you can't do anything more than that so what, what we have to do now is uh, at the receiver you have to figure out how how to do decoding okay i don't know what happened Okay, I think something is happening here. I'm going to try closing this. Okay. Okay, I think it's recording. So let's see. So we have to decode this. And uh, let me just quickly check that. So it is recording, right? Okay. So. Uh, you have to decode this and produce what? Decode this and produce some C hat or M hat. You can think of it either way because this is a one to one mapping. Okay. This is a one to one mapping. Okay. From message to the code. What is the code? Definition of the code is what? Set of all C. Okay, so that is the definition of the code. So how many code words will you have? 2 power k. Okay, in general, if you look at all n bit sequences, you have 2 power n uh, n bit numbers, but n bit vectors, but that's all of them will not be in the code, only a, some small subset of them will be in the code. Okay. So I put a I've put code here in this box, but remember this is what is called an encoder. Okay. You have 2 power k vectors on the left, 2 power k vectors on the right. How many possible ways in which you can do one to one mapping? Sorry? No? Nobody knows the answer. Okay, so at least there's more than one. Okay, everybody agrees there's more than one. Okay, there are in fact a huge number of ways in which you can do a one to one mapping. Okay, so you take permutations, you will get that. Okay, so that, that, that many ways in which you can do that. So for a, for a single code, there can be millions of encoders if k is large. Okay. So in typical, in practice, this k and n will be fairly large. Okay, so in most systems, maybe in wireless systems, it's a little bit small for accounting for some reasons. But at least hundreds. Okay, so you have to think of k and n as hundreds. Okay, so if you have hundred bits, how many possibilities are there? Two power hundred possibilities are there. And you have to map that into a code word. Okay, so encoding itself is a can be a complex operation. So you have to think of all kinds of ways of doing it. Okay, so that's the kind of numbers. The examples we'll see will be very simple examples where I take k is one, k is four, and all that. Okay, so most people don't use such codes in practice. Always k is thought of as a large uh, number. Okay, so those are all things that I talked about uh, in the last class. Okay, so a couple of other definitions. Rate of the code is k by n. This is basically the units. If, if the units is it's good to keep in mind this. The way I've written it down, it's bits per symbol. Okay. So and that's that's uh, that's a reasonably good way of putting down units. Okay. So bits per symbol. So tomorrow you might look at a coded system where you have, say, 16 QAM constellation or a 64 QAM constellation or a 256 QAM constellation. Okay. It's a huge constellation. Even there, if, if for an uncoded system, you know how many bits per symbol you can carry. For a coded system, it'll be lesser than that but usually people always say bits per symbol as a unit for bpsk it's very clear k by n will be less than 1 okay so that's the rate okay and then the important definition of eb over n naught 
Okay, so this worked out for this BPSK system to be 1 over 2 R sigma squared. Okay, so you remember the key point I made was if R changes, something changes in this equation. So typically your EB over N0, you will hold a constant when comparing say a coded system and a uncoded system. Okay, so EB over N0, you hold a constant say 3 dB or 6 dB or some such thing. For a 6 dB EB over N0, if R is 1, you get a certain sigma if r is half you get a higher sigma okay so sigma changes depending on what your rate is okay so i gave you an explanation for why that can be expected because you are letting in more noise by doing a faster clocking okay so that's the way of thinking about it but that's an important uh, way of comparing because because that equates the actual energy per information bit okay if you don't do that by r division Okay, divided division by r you are not equating uh, the correct things so you are not comparing the right things so like i said when you do coding you pay two penalties one is in terms of power the other is in terms of rate both of them are nicely captured in this eb over n0 okay so if you make a plot of bit error rate versus eb over n0 okay that is an accurate comparison between several different systems with coding with without coding with coding of different rates also you might have different rates, right? So all those things are very nicely comparable. Okay? Yes. It's, it's all there. Energy per information bit. Okay, you can think of it as rate, but uh, well, it's it's there is a bit of power also in it. Computing energy in terms of it. Okay? So so the thing is, you you should not just write SNR. Okay. So, if you only look at simple energy divided by noise energy, it's misleading you. You're not getting the right picture. Okay? There might be situations where SNR is important to you. If you only care about SNR and EB over N0 doesn't matter, then, then maybe SNR one can argue, but it's not really a very good way of comparing systems. Okay? Okay. So any other question on this? Okay. So for instance, this kind of model is very important because when people evaluate coded systems, computing bit error rate and all is pretty much impossible. For today's complex error control codes, you can't compute bit error rate analytically. Okay. So what you do is you set up a simulation like this. You come up with an EB over N0, which hopefully captures a real quantity in an actual system. And then you run simulations. Okay. And you see how much your EB over N0 curve shifts when you do coding and when you don't do coding. And that's your coding gain. And that you can expect in a real system. Okay, so the difference is what's important. Okay, so like I said, I've been talking about it all the time. So in this model, you might get a plot for this might be the uncoded system, and for a coded system, you might get another plot. So remember, this is BER versus EB over N0. Okay, typically this is in log scale, this is in dB. Okay, so these things are important. You should when you present a BER versus EB over N0 curve. You should always have the x-axis in dB and the y-axis should be in log scale. Don't ask me why. Okay, At this point, you should know the importance of dB and log scale. Okay, I think uh, in the lab, I had a huge shock when people were presenting spectrum plots with y-axis from 0 to 20,000 and x-axis from 0 to 200,000. I think by your final year, you should be professional about presenting your results. right? So when you present a spectrum, what should be y-axis and what should be x-axis? Yeah, dB and frequency. right? So that's, that's how it should be. It should be hertz and db on the y-axis. Why Why is db so important? Why can't you do linear scale? Well, you can't the yeah, so, so the resolution you get in the linear scale between 10 power minus 4 and 10 power minus 5, you can't see anything. Okay? Only in db you can see something. Only, only there you'll see something. Okay, So that's important. Hopefully, uh, another thing about presenting curves, I think another thing which I realized people have not understood after four years of engineering. You should not present a spectrum plot which looks like, it shouldn't look like that, right? So a spectrum plot should not look like this, right? Do you expect a real system to have a spectrum which looks like this, right? I saw a lot of people giving me such plots, but it should not look like that, okay? How should it look? It should look smooth. Same way this curve also should look smooth, okay? What do you do to make it look smooth? If it's not something is not smooth, then you have to window an average. Okay, so that's what you do. These are standard ticks that most engineers are expected to know. Surprisingly, many people didn't know in the lab. Okay, so hopefully you learn it at least now. Okay, I'm just saying saying this to you. All right. So this these curves have, are usually generated by simulation, like I said. So your EB over N0 is important because if this number, this difference is 2 dB, okay, say for instance, at some bit error rate, say 10 power minus 5, then even in a real system, in a real system, you can expect the same 2 dB improvement. Okay. These absolute numbers on the x-axis may not mean much. 
in your model it will be very different in the real system it will be very different but if you did the modeling right the difference will map on to a very close map on to a very have a very close match with the real difference you see in a physical system okay so that's why these models are important the reason why such block diagrams are very nice is the whole theory of digital communication is is uh, the reason why it's so successful and so clean is because of the strong mathematical models how you can do the whole thing with mathematical models and suddenly when you go to real practice you see the same gains okay so such kind of strong results you won't have in many other areas okay so that's why this thing is so mathematical and so clean and so nice okay all right so that's a uh, bit about the model so let's let's keep going so the first few codes i'm going to show you are bad codes in the sense that you don't provide coding gain okay but but it's they are good good lessons to start off with and then we'll build up on it and maybe see a few good codes okay so the first type of codes we'll see are repetition codes <coughs> okay so the most obvious thing to do is uh, repeat a bit when you don't know any better okay so here's the encoder for a repetition code okay you put you pick k equals 1 so you have just one message m you pick n equals 3 and your code word is c1 c2 c3 okay so this is my repetition code so what am i going to do i'm going to repeat okay so i'll make a table with m and c it's really simple 0 goes to 0 0 0 and 1 goes to 1 1 1 okay so if i put bpsk here i'll get a simple vector s1 s2 s3 and uh, if you want you can write s also 1 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 okay and then this goes through a noisy channel and then you get r which is r1 r2 r3 and you're supposed to build a decoder here to get back your uh, estimate of the message okay so this is the way a repetition code will work so this is a specific example for n equals 3 okay you can vary n for instance i could have a n equals 5 repetition code so what would i do if i have n equals 5 repetition code yeah just repeat 5 times okay you can have any other n if you want okay so n equals 3 is the simplest example and uh, i can easily illustrate some properties okay so so uh, so traditionally when when you couldn't uh, for instance so so when you couldn't process real data in your receiver okay so what do you mean by real data you can't this real numbers don't really exist right so you have to only quantize them right so you have maybe an 8 bit quantizer or 6 bit quantizer or something and then you give it to your uh, receiver okay sometimes it might happen that you don't have any such thing and all you have is a 1 bit quantizer so in that case you have to put a slicer there and make a decision decision symbol by symbol which is immediately suboptimal okay so all these three received values are correlated right they are they are not independent and you have to use the, dat the data from that totally to get one estimate for your message if you're going to immediately independently quantize each of them to one bit right it's immediately becoming suboptimal okay so but maybe because of uh, complexity in restrictions in your receiver you're forced to do that okay so if you do that you're set to employ a hard decision decoder okay so that's called the hard decision decoder and the hard decision decoder is the easiest to study okay so we'll do that first so what do i mean by hard decision decoder i'm going to slice slice symbol by symbol okay so which is a which is a suboptimal thing to do and i get b1 b2 b3 okay what will these b1 b2 b3 be they will be bits okay right they will be bits now so i have gone from my code word to a same length vector of bits okay but what are the possibilities for b1 b2 b3 if i call this vector b my code word was only one of two possibilities so what about b1 b2 b3 can be any one of eight possibilities okay so that's the difficulty okay so now we have to decode from b to you build what's called a hard decision decoder hard okay so this is the first type of system we'll study so la later on we'll see that this is really really bad so we'll move on to a soft decision decoder which works with r1 r2 r3 together without doing any suboptimal uh, slicing okay so we'll do that soon enough but first first thing we'll see is this guy okay so you do that to produce c hat or m hat 
okay so it's good to make tables whenever you have situations like this okay so let's look let's make a table of b okay how many vectors do i have for b okay i'll make this table out of order because it's convenient okay so if you just stare at this b for a while you know immediately what the corresponding c hat has to be right it's, it's easy and intuitive to make a guess for what c hat will be what will be the c hat for the first one okay 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 what rule am i using now yeah i'm just seeing in some way which code word my vector of b is closest to in some sense okay right so you see that and you make a decision okay so you might wonder about the optimality of such an approach it turns out such an approach is optimal in this case once you make a hard decision okay which is again suboptimal after you make that hard decision decoding which uh, within the hard decision decoders this is optimal okay so it turns out this is what you have to do okay so I'll, I'll give you general rules for how to do this later on but for now this is a very simple enough example okay so the first thing we have to do now is i have a system like this which is a coded system i have to find its probability of error as a function of eb over n0 okay and then compare that with the plot of the uncoded eb over n0 and figure out my coding gain or in this case as it will happen coding loss okay so that's what you have to figure out okay so i'm going to give you a couple of minutes to figure out probability of bit error for this decoder it's very easy Okay, so to help you a little bit, just fix m equals zero. Okay, first thing you do is fix m equals zero. Okay, don't play around with two both possibilities. Fix m equals zero. So you're sending zero zero zero. Okay, so now you have to find probability that each bi will be in error. Okay, it turns out you can do it that way. Okay, so what's the probability that b1 will be in error or b2 will be in error or b3 will be in error? What's the probability? I'll call that p. That will be q of one by sigma. Do you see that? Okay, sigma is my noise variance here. Okay, so this is probability that what? What is this p? Probability that b i hat not equal to c i. Okay, so of course this is seems like it's conditioned on c i equals zero, but even if you condition on c i equals one, you'll get the same answer. Okay, so this is the probability of error at after the hard decision. Okay, so once you do that, it's easy to figure out probability of error after your decoder when will you make errors yeah when if two of them go in error or all three of them go in error okay so what's the probability that two of them will go in error it can happen in three possible ways 3p square 1 minus p plus p power 3 this is the probability of error okay so if you want you can simplify this a little bit 3p squared minus 2p power 3 okay so now if you so so the, such an expression might be difficult to deal with so what's the best way of simplifying it yeah just look at the leading term okay so if, if sigma becomes really low clearly p square will dominate over p power 3 so it's enough if you look at 3 p square okay so this is roughly if i want an expression in terms of q it will be what 3 times q of 1 by sigma squared q squared of 1 by sigma okay so so one might need an approximation for q i think we can use the exponential approximation if you want so you can pull the two in fact inside the thing if you want okay but remember i have to write p in terms of eb over n0 that's an important thing okay so let's keep this expression for a while and then see what happens if we don't write p in terms of eb over n0 and simply compare with 1 by sigma which is your 
<coughs> SNR. Okay, so you'll see you'll go wrong. Okay, so so this is probability of error for the coded system. This works out roughly as three times q squared one by sigma. What's probability of error for uncoded system? It will be q one by sigma. If you just stare at these two expression, it looks like you're doing better. Okay, probability of error for the coded system is better than probability of error for the uncoded system, but it clearly it's sigma being low. Okay, so if you plot versus one by sigma, it's very misleading, or one by sigma square, which is SNR, right? It's very misleading. But if you convert to EB over NR, what happens? What is EB over NR in this case for the coded guy? It's three by two sigma square, right? R is one by three. What is EB over NR in this case? It's one by Two sigma square. There's a threefold increase in threefold decrease in one by sigma because of well, maybe one by root three terms decrease because of the rate factor. If you do this conversion and substitute it back here, let's look at probability of error for the coded system. It's going to be three times q squared what root two by three e b over n naught. Okay, and for the uncoded system, it's going to be q of square root of you know this already two e b over n naught. Okay, so this q square is a little bit confusing. So maybe if you do an approximation for q as an exponential or some such thing, you'll see you'll see how it works out. But if you plot these two things, you'll actually get a loss because of coding. Okay, so if you actually plot it. Plot PE versus EB over N naught. If your coded curve, uncoded curve lies here, your coded curve will actually be marginally worse. You can try this in MATLAB if you want. Okay. So it means what does it mean? It means because you did this coding, you are wasting too much energy. You are not getting back enough gain for all the energy you wasted. Okay, so that's what has happened. Okay, but if you plot with respect to just SNR, it's okay. There's no problem. So when will EB over N not matter, and when will SNR matter? From oh, from physical. Well, yeah, when R is one, then both of them are the same. I agree with you, but I'm talking about uh, from a physical point of view. When will when should you in a physical system? When should you under what constraints will you worry about EB over N not, and under what constraints will you worry about? Okay, maybe. So, so what is energy per bit? Okay, so remember when 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 energy is a significant constraint for you, then you have to worry about plots with respect to EB over N naught. For instance, if you are working with a handset which has which has a battery, and every all the power comes from battery, and you don't want to burn the battery too fast, so then EB over N naught becomes important. But if it's already uh, if if you are working with SNR, then it means what? The energy comes for free pretty much right so if that is the situation then maybe snr is a better uh, better way to compare but but nobody will use snr okay in terms of coding gain if you want to quantify the actual gain that the system is giving you you have to use eb over n okay so pretty much all right so this is what happens in the uh, hard decision decoder okay so 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 this kind of a system repetition code with the hard decision decoder is really bad okay so now there could be two reasons for why this is bad Okay, what are the two reasons? In comparison with coding uncoded systems, this has become bad. There could be two reasons. What are the two reasons? Okay. I'm sorry. Rate is less. Well, one one question is maybe the code was bad. Okay, so one might say the code was bad. The repetition code 000111 is not a good code. Maybe you should pick a some other code of the same rate. Okay, that's one thing. That that could be a point. Another thing is, you're doing a suboptimal decoding. Maybe the decoding was bad. Okay. So what we'll do next is to use the same code and use the optimal soft decision decoder. Okay. There also you'll see there is no coding coding gain. In fact, there there is coding gain is zero. So it'll be lying right on top of the uncoded curve. Okay. So that we can show uh, very nicely. So once we show that, then we know that the code is bad. Okay. The reason why the code is bad is basically k equals one and all is too small. You don't have that kind of flexibility in looking for things. Okay, so we'll see we'll see that as we go along. Okay, so the next thing we'll see 
is a soft decoder for repetition codes. Okay, so what should you do if for a soft decoder? You have R1, R2, R3. Okay, a soft decoder is going to directly work on this R and produce a produce a C hat or M hat. That's what it does. Okay. So there are there are several ways of doing it. We have already seen these detection problems. Okay, so how do you when you receive R, you have transmitted two possibilities, S is one 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 or minus one minus one minus one. What's an optimal rule? What is the ML rule? I'm sorry? Nearest neighbor. Nearest neighbor, right? So that's what we saw. It's the same thing as ML. So there's no difference between this and decoding on a constellation. Okay, so make sure you understand what I'm saying. Okay. So so far we've looked at constellations as one symbol per time. Okay, it was only either plus one or minus one. You sent it per unit time. So now it's as if my constellation has expanded over three dimensions. For for, for bit zero, I'm sending plus one plus one plus one over three dimensions. So my constellation is a three dimensional picture. But still I have only two points in my transmit constellation. My receive point can be anywhere and the optimal rule is definitely to look for the nearest neighbor. Nearest neighbor in Euclidean distance. So you look at the distance and look for the neighbor. So clearly that's the optimal rule. There's no problem with that. You already derived it. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay. So you look at the ML rule. Okay. So you look for this this uh, this distance okay so r minus 1 1 1 okay square and then compare it with r minus minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 okay so you see if this is greater or lesser okay so let's do a some do some simplification here if you look at this simplification it becomes what it should really simplify to something nice i hope Okay, so this is nothing but R1 minus 1 squared plus R2 minus 1 squared plus R3 minus 1 squared. Okay, you want to see if this is, do you see what I'm doing? This is my distance from one point. This is my distance from the other point. I'm seeing which one I am closer to. Okay, so this is going to be R1 plus 1 squared plus R2 plus 1 squared plus R3 plus 1 squared. Okay, go ahead and simplify this and see if you get a... So it's just a question of comparing whether R1 plus R2 plus R3 is greater than or less than 0. If it is greater than 0, you decide C hat is it's greater than C hat is 0, 0, 0. If it is lesser, then you decide C hat is 1, 1, 1. Okay, so this is an optimal soft decision decoder. Okay, so you have to look at R1 plus R2 plus R3. Is there a question? I'm sorry. Let's let's see. I'll give you an example. Suppose R is minus ten, one one. Okay. Suppose R is minus ten, one one. What's your soft decision decoder going to tell? Okay. So. So it's, these two are not the same. Okay, clearly they're not the same, and uh, one is better than the other. Okay, definitely that's also true. Okay, so pay some attention to that. How do I delete it? Okay, anyway, so let me just do this erasing. Okay, so easily you can cook up situations to show that one is not the same as the other. Okay, the next question is, okay, so now we have a soft detector, the ideal detection that you can do for the <coughs> for this code okay for this error control code i have okay so what is the probability of error for this okay so that's the computation you have to do okay so again condition on fix m equals 0 which means what the transmitted symbol vector is 1 1 1 okay which means what will be the pdf of r1 plus r2 plus r3 okay what will be R1 plus R2 plus R3? So you can easily show if this is the case, R1 plus R2 plus R3 will be distributed normal with mean 3 and variance 3 sigma squared. You see that? 
right once you condition on a given transmitted code word r1 r2 and r3 all three of them become jointly normal distributed jointly normal in fact independent once you can condition on transmitted code word being 0 0 0 if i don't do that conditioning it's clearly not gaussian okay if i don't condition on the code word what is the distribution of r1 it's a mixture gaussian right so there are two gaussians which are adding up so i can't say anything about the sum of those two distribution i have to do a painful convolution right so i don't want to do all that so if i condition on one code word being transmitted r1 plus r2 plus r3 becomes very easy okay so normal with mean 3 and variance 3 sigma square okay so now when will i make an error if a transmitted uh, symbol was 111 or the bit was 0 when will i make an error if r1 plus r2 plus r3 is less than 0 so given a, given that r1 plus r2 plus r3 is distributed as normal with mean 3 and variance 3 sigma square what's the probability that r1 plus r2 plus r3 is less than 0 is the question i'm asking okay q of 3 by root 3 sigma okay so that's the probability of error. so it's a very easy computation to do so you see probability of error goes as q of 3 by root 3 sigma which works out to q of root 3 by sigma okay all right so you might argue i only conditioned on m equals 0 if you do if m equals 1 what will happen r1 plus r2 plus r3 will be normal with mean minus 3 and variance it's not minus 3 sigma square so it's 3 sigma square so now but probability of error will be when r1 plus r2 plus r3 is greater than 0 so once again you get a q of 3 by root 3 sigma and you can show it's okay so for the type of code i have chosen it's enough if you can freeze on one code word and do the computation one can show that that's enough okay so you do that so this is the probability of error so let's do a conversion to eb over n not so what's eb over n not 3 by 2 sigma square so use that here and you get probability of error to be q of you should get 2 eb over n not so after all this effort what have you done this is for the coded system what have you done you found a probability of error which is the same as what you would have for the uncoded system okay so if you now plot ber versus eb over n not for the soft detector what will you get you just get one curve lying on top of each other okay so nothing in the analysis i did is specific to n being equal to 3 if i replace n by any other number say 10 what will be probability of error same q of root 10 okay so instead of 3 you will get 10 okay and if you do eb over n not substitution then what will happen you will get the same you can say then you will be same okay whatever n is probability of error will be in terms of eb over n not q of root 2 eb over n not okay in terms of sigma it will change because sigma the relationship is changed okay so the conclusion clearly is repetition code is not good enough provides no coding gain okay so i'm not saying it's not good enough because it's used several times in many systems people use something called arq which is in some way just a repetition okay it causes a loss of capacity as in doesn't provide really coding gain but it's used because it's a very practical tool and it really works okay at some level it really works but it does not provide any coding gain provides no coding gain okay so 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 why did i do repetition code in such detail okay so there are a couple of uh, uh, important reasons why i do it first thing is to understand the encoding process and the definition of eb over n not and how it works with sigma okay so that's an that's an important change when you go to the coding system coded system okay so that's the first thing the other thing is your probability of error changes depending on the decode okay and typically soft decoders are better than hard decoders okay so all these lessons we have learned even though we looked at a bad code okay so these three lessons are definitely true okay so definition of eb over n not and all that is very carefully done and then you have to build a good code and then on top of that you have to decode it properly you can't just do any kind of decoding you want then you won't get any gain okay all right so any questions any point that you are not so clear about okay so this is okay so one question that's always i ask all the time This is this in such a system, R1 and R2 and R3 are they independent or not? Okay, if you look at them as random variables, 
are they independent or not they are independent r1 and r2 are independent okay so it's a question that confuses people <laughs> so clearly they're not independent if they were independent then yeah a hard decision should be clearly optimal right so why, what is the distribution of r1 r2 r3 if you have to write down the pdf how will you write it down let's say okay forget about r3 just r1 r2 it's a two dimensional pdf what's the pdf two gaussians on 1 1 and minus 1 minus 1 okay so that's clear okay so if you do r1 r2 r3 it will be sum of two gaussians again but it will be in three dimensional space it's a little bit confusing okay so you, so you see clearly r1 r1 and r2 are not independent okay so independent things don't have such such joint pdfs right it will be nice and uh, will be distributed in respective of what x is y should have the same thing so this is changing all over the place so it can't be that way okay so r1 r2 r3 are not independent okay but i am able to conveniently use some independence assumptions in the probability of error computation how did i do that uh, once you condition it becomes independent right see it's a it's a gaussian centered on minus 1 minus 1 and plus 1 plus 1 but once i condition what happens it's only one gaussian okay and then you have all your independence properties coming back together okay so it's so each of those gaussians are nice and uncorrelated gaussians only but since they're adding two of them they become dependent okay so once you condition on something it becomes independent and you can use a lot of simple analysis okay so once so since once they are conditioned it's independent why can't it do hard decision yeah so there's no conditioning right so when you do receiving you don't know what was transmitted if you know what was transmitted you don't need to do anything okay so that's why it's not uh, very clear all right so so these these notions are important you might say seems very silly but people make mistakes when these notions i've seen particularly in exam problems all kinds of answers for questions like this okay all right so i think we'll stop here in the next class we'll look at uh, hamming code which is a which is a very standard and good example of a good code which provides a very simple coding game but still it's a nice code to look at